Hi, and welcome to The Property Show. My name is Nancy. This is the show that is sure to give you an in-depth look into the property market, provide you with professional advice, trends, tips, and first-hand information on the hottest properties available in the market. There is something for everyone. Paul and Caroline are in a merry-go-round investment group that seems to be going nowhere, and they would like to pull their resources together and invest in a real estate project. Our big question today is, how can you take your chama to the next level? Hey, hey look at this house. Wow. Mm -hmm. How much do you think that would cost? So, Bayako, when you press you just appreciate the design. My dear, money is everything. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. are you still going for that Shama meeting? Because I should start coming with me. Yeah, we need to start taking this thing seriously. Mm -hmm. Do you know Walter, my workmate? Hello, IT. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just imagine the Chama is now buying land mm -hmm. and selling it at a higher price. It's more like an investment group now. Mm, even our Chama can buy land. <laughs> oh, no. We don't have that kind of focus. Come on, collect pesa to Ndioshida. Small, small things that should not be holding us back. <laughs> Okay, so what do you suggest we do then? Like Kina Walter, mm. huh? they have shareholders, they have a board of directors, they have secretaries. Hey. But that sounds like we'll need more money for all those people. Atikina secretary. No, 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 it doesn't have to be a huge amount of money. Hmm? Mm. We, can, we can bring in these new graduates. Mm. Kazi ko pijama. <laughs> and think mm. about it. Mm. If we get our business right, Banks will be willing to offer us larger loans to mm. develop our business. Oh, so is it like a company of sorts? Exactly. So, twenty na wewe kwa chama, then you can tell the other guys. Lakini leo kuna game ya manu na Arsenal. Are you serious? <laughs> tulia, tulia. I'll come with you. How can you take your chama to the next level? Most people are in merry-go-rounds and are wondering how to take their chamas to the next level. Today with us, we have Mr. Tony Wainaina. Tony is the chairman of Origins Investment Group Advisors. Tony will be telling us what we need to know about investing as a group or a chama. Welcome, Tony, and thank you for coming. Thank you, Nancy. Tell us what an investment group or a chama is. An investment group uh, or chama as they are popularly known here, is a collection of like-minded people, uh, most of the time, who have come together to pool their resources uh, with an objective in mind. And um, most of the investment groups that we have in this country are focused on investing in property as an asset class. Uh, but we have different sizes, you know, from the smaller merry-go-rounds uh, to the slightly more formal investment groups that um, younger Kenyans are coming together to, to create, to the larger investment holding companies, you know, some of uh, which have become very successful and very visible in our economy. From inception, how should we drive an investment group? Well, from the very beginning, uh, the members of an investment group should really think of themselves as uh, a formal entity. Um, instead of thinking of themselves as a small, informal uh, grouping of people that have come together uh, to contribute money and to uh, invest in relatively passive opportunities, they should think of themselves as a formal company, okay? A company that has um, memorandum and articles of association uh, that uh, they can structure a board of directors under. So the governance structures around the company are very clearly thought out and, and put in place. And they have to make a distinction between the, the board and the shareholders and the management of the company. Um, they should look at putting together a shareholders agreement that really formalizes the relationship between the shareholders. Um, they need to have um, a very clear idea about where they are going, their objectives. So having a very clear strategic vision of in the next 10, 15, 20 years, where do I want this group to be? And what am I getting out of it as an individual? We've seen some chamas which are very, very successful. Mm -hmm. How do they take it to that level? It, it's a change of mindset, 
okay, um, on many levels. They, those are the investment groups that have stopped thinking small and are thinking much bigger now. Um, those are the investment groups that are not thinking short term anymore, they're thinking long term. And a lot of the time, these are the groups that really believe that they can transform these investment groups into their retirement plans. So that is the first thing that makes the big difference. The other one is um, professionalizing their operations. They professionalize themselves in terms of governance. So not every single shareholder, for instance, is a director or is meeting at the same time to make decisions. They have um, professionalized their service providers. So they have a company secretary, they have uh, lawyers, they have auditors, accountants. And they are not bringing these professional service providers on, um, on the criteria of affordability. You know, you've heard of the term uh, cheap can also be very expensive. Um, so they, they need to be very sure that they're getting the right um, professional service providers on board. Uh, Tony, in an investment group, what are the key investments that you recommend uh, we should undertake? Well, I think an investment group should really look at um, a diversified portfolio. Uh, putting all your eggs into one basket is, is usually not recommended. Uh, and you should only really be doing this um, if you have grown to a certain level that gives you the ability to say, um, focus on one specific type of um, property development, for instance. But for the younger groups, uh, having a combination of some money that is liquid, and when I say liquid, I mean they are able to have access to that money very quickly. And the benefit of having money that is uh, liquid is that in the event of an opportunity arising, say there's a piece of land that uh, comes available and you need to put down this 10% deposit in the next two, three days or else you lose that opportunity. Having that liquid investment that you can have access to very quickly makes a huge difference. But looking at the investments that have the real growth opportunities, the real value appreciation opportunities, property, real estate is definitely one of them. And there are different um, categories of real estate uh, developments that are out there from the site and service opportunities mm -hmm. where you're buying an undeveloped property that um, you can um, subdivide and get change of user and put a minimal amount of infrastructure, but you've added value. And then you're able to sell that property um, at a higher price, mm -hmm. but you've got to get into the habit of doing this continuously. And obviously you have your real estate developments that uh, you are putting up uh, to generate uh, rental income. Um, it is an asset class that is very well known. You know, the banks are very comfortable giving you money uh, to, to, to purchase real estate. And there is um, a, a market out there. Whenever you want to sell the property, it's, it's, it's not a struggle to find the right buyers uh, to give you the right price. Um, so, you know, for as long as we have um, property investment opportunities, I think it's a, it's a sector that has to be looked at um, as, as a great investment opportunity. But always keeping in mind that proper due diligence is absolutely necessary. Thank you, Tony, for your expertise on how to invest as a charmer. We are taking a short break, and when we come back, Tony will continue telling us what we need to know as an investment group. Don't go away. Zuku Hookup. Hook your friends up and we'll hook you up with a free flat screen TV. It couldn't be easier. Just get your friends to subscribe to Zuku and you'll get that flat screen TV. No draws, no competition, just guaranteed TV prizes. Start hooking up your friends today. See press and posters for details. Zuku. Amazing. Yeah. Welcome back to The Property Show as we continue our discussion on how to take your investment group to the next level. Tony, are there some investment ventures that as an investment group we should not touch? Tell us about that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think there, there are several 
cases where investment groups have lost a significant amount of money uh, when they invested in something that sounded too good to be true. So that's the first one. If it sounds too good to be true, think twice and ask twice. And you've got to really, again, understand how these companies make their money. If you don't understand it, don't invest. The other companies to avoid are those which people are buying into, um, uh, and, and, I'm, and I mean very, very many people are buying into at the same time, okay? If too many people know about the opportunity, the opportunity is gone, okay? Um, but again, you've got to question yourself. Wh why should I be investing in this opportunity right now? There, there are companies that have been listed um, in our stock exchange in, in the not too distant past, where literally, you know, hundreds of thousands of Kenyans um, were fighting to get a piece of the action. Um, the companies may have been great in terms of the sectors, the people behind the companies, they were profitable. Um, <clears throat> but when you have too many people chasing after too few shares, you know, what obviously tends to happen at the outset is yes, the price may go up. But um, <clears throat> if the investors have a very short term perspective about that opportunity, they'll be looking to sell their shares as quickly as they, they went in. And once you start selling and you suddenly don't have the buyers, you know, the price is depressed. Um, I think the other companies that should be avoided are companies that um, have a very limited market. Um, again, unless you're a real professional investor, that has done a significant amount of research, uh, really understand the sector. It could be a sector within uh, the ICT uh, industry that um, has a very small customer base. Maybe they, they only have one or two customers. Yeah, The margins may be fantastic. They may be extremely um, high. But it's, it's a company that depends on technology trends that shift very quickly from literally from one year to the next. So again, if the opportunity looks uh, fantastic, but it may be a, a window in which uh, you're expected to invest, um, it, it is high risk. So high risk opportunities like that, I think should, should be avoided by groups as well. So I think the thing to do is just take baby steps, look at um, uh, opportunities that uh, are relatively uh, less risky, um, they, they have a very clear market, very many people willing to uh, participate in that particular industry. And there is an easy exit 